What's up Lazy Dog fam? Hope everybody out there is having an amazing day. It's a nice 80 degree day here on the homestead exactly a week before Christmas. Supposed to get some rain tonight and uh, got a lot of things we need to do in the garden today and some things we need to do in the kitchen today. I'll be sure to carry you guys along. So let's get started. First thing on our list, we need to pick our English peas one more time. We picked these a few weeks ago, showed y'all on that video. Since then, a few of the plants have started looking a little pitiful there, as you can see. But we still got a decent amount of pods on here, so we should get a pretty good little second harvest. I don't know if we'll get a third harvest, but we got a pretty good first harvest, put up a few bags, and now it's time for the second harvest. Those on the other side of the panel there, if you can see through there, don't look near as bad as some of these over here i'm not really sure what's happening if it's disease or whatever's getting them but um some of them are holding on well enough to still be producing some peas for us All right, so we were able to pick them pretty clean that time. There's a few pods here at the top, like those guys there you see that aren't filled out yet. But most of the pods were filled out. I believe we got a hair bit more than we did on the first picking. We had about a little under, maybe half that bucket full the first time. There ain't many more, but I think there is a little bit more on the second picking. Now on that first picking, some of those pods weren't quite filled out all the way. It's kind of hard to tell until you shell them. They feel plump, but they might not be all the way filled out. But these puppies right here are nice and plump and full. You can see that right there? Nice, good sized peas there. And I don't think we'll get a third picking off these. I'm not seeing a whole lot more flowers out there. If we do get a third picking, it'll probably just be a little bit of a snack. Now, the first picking, we put up four quart bags in the freezer, and we may, I think we got enough here probably, once we shell them out, since these peas are a little bit bigger, probably get five quart bags. So, everybody's always wanting to know how much seed do I need to plant to get this. So, we planted a whole pound of these PLS 595 seeds here because I really no such thing as planting English peas too thick. We got two double rows, which are about... 15 20 foot long so let's just say a 40 foot double row planted a whole pound of seeds we put up nine quart bags of peas snacked on a bunch ate some fresh that's not a bad return on investment it's not the best return on investment we get from buying seeds but it's not a bad one considering these things are so much better than the ones you get at the grocery store hey i'll take it and the next thing on our list today has to do with our elephant garlic here, which is looking pretty good. But before we do that, something on my mind before I forget. As I was over here noticing how pretty these parsnips were looking, it reminded me of something. So the other day I had to go to the grocery store, went to the local Publix, and as you can probably figure, we don't go to the grocery store a whole lot because of all these good groceries we get out here in the backyard. But I was making some radish kimchi, which I'm gonna show you in a little bit. And the recipe I was using called for some green onions. And I didn't have any green onions. My onions aren't really big enough to be cutting on yet. So I had to go buy some green onions. When I was buying some green onions, kind of right beside them, I noticed they were selling parsnips in this little bitty bag with only about three or four parsnips in it for four or five dollars. Now, I don't know that I've ever bought parsnips at a grocery store, but I didn't realize they were so high. I mean, a dollar a piece for parsnips. So, you know, growing your own parsnips, if you eat a lot of parsnips, is a lot more economical than buying them at the grocery store. I didn't realize they were so high. And if you're a market farmer and you've got a market for parsnips, you probably do pretty good. Yeah, based on the grocery store price, it's probably at least $50 worth of parsnips, if not more, in that little row there. Okay, back to the elephant garlic here. So, last time we were in here messing with this, we planted this soft neck garlic here, which is coming up. You can see out there. Not all of them have came up, but most of them have. And right before we did that, we side dressed our elephant garlic with some nitrogen, healed it up there, got the tape covered, 
and it's responding well to the fertilizer but today I want to go ahead and kind of mulch this stuff here so I mentioned to you on that video when we were planting the soft neck garlic that I had read if you can keep the soil cooler for a few more weeks as the garlic elephant garlic or the soft neck matures in the spring then you can get significantly larger bulbs one way to keep that soil cooler would be to put some straw on it and we've got lots of pine trees around here now pine straw around here isn't that expensive but I've got some on the ground and I think we can rake up enough to go ahead and mulch that garlic just go ahead and kind of put it down for the winter so we don't have to worry with it anymore I do want to give it one more shot of nitrogen before I do that because it's going to be hard to side dress it if it's got mulch around it so we're going to give it one more application of that nature safe 1300 we'll rake up some straw and uh We'll get it covered. So we got a few decent piles raked up here. My helper come out here and help me. There's another pile over there. I don't know if that's going to be quite enough or not. So we're going to see. And if not, I know where I can get some more. What are you letting go right there? Looking around these plants. Why? So, they won't get so hot. Uh, I got some more. Okay. Look, I got some. Look, here you go, Dad. Thank you, buddy. All right, all right, all right. We got it strawed. We didn't have quite enough right here just around my pine tree, so I had to go back there and uh, scratch up some behind my neighbor's pine trees. But we got them covered in pretty good. I didn't do this side of this third row here because I figure I'll do that once we do this soft neck garlic. Once it gets up a little bit more, we can side dress it one time. But at least we got these three spaces taken care of and uh, we'll see how it goes. And if you watch our channel, you know I don't care much for mulching annuals, but in the case of the garlic that is there for a long, long time, and hopefully if it does what it's supposed to do, growing bigger cloves of garlic, it will be worth it. It wouldn't be worth it on a lot of the crops we grow just because they're not in the ground long enough to justify putting down all that straw and if we strawed every plot we had it would take a lot of straw but we're gonna try it just on the garlic hopefully it'll work we shall see so now that we've got that taken care of I need to pick some stuff for supper tonight we've got a friend who every year around this time a week or so before Christmas has an oyster roast has a bunch of our friends over and they called and said they wanted me to bring some collards and I thought hmm oysters and collards I don't know that I've ever had those two things together. I like both of them a lot. And it ain't nothing for me to cook up a big pot of collards. In fact, I love a good excuse to cook up a big pot of collards. And we've got plenty here, so let's get to picking. Now this is my second time picking this flash variety here. I've got some of the champion collards on the end of this row. I like these flash collards a lot better. This is the closest thing I've found so far to that tiger variety I like so much that got discontinued. Now these feel a little bit wilty cause, cause it's so hot out here today, but uh, they'll be all right to get cooked up. We'll get them in the house, get them some, in some cool air pretty quick. On the first picking, you got to be pretty careful cause the stalks are still kind of tender. You can't be too rough on them, but now the stalks are in the ground good. And another good thing about, you know, the second or third or future pickings is these things are off the ground a lot more and they really don't have to be washed a whole lot. They're pretty clean. We're just going to get these bigger leaves out of here. Leave some of those smaller leaves on there. About like that. And we're going to 
fill up this basket here, put as many as we can in there, and cook a big old pot up. All right, we didn't pick the whole row. There's about four plants on the end there still need harvesting, but we got our basket overflowing, and that should be enough for a big old pot of collards. So let's go inside, and I'll show you how we do it. Now before we cook them collards, I promised I'd show you guys this radish kimchi we made here. I made it a few days ago, let it sit out one day and ferment. It's been in the fridge for a couple days and we're going to put it in jars today. And we're going to give it a try. I have yet to try this so I'm interested to see how it tastes. So these are some of the daikon radishes we pulled from that cover crop plot before we mowed it and tarped it. I'll make sure to put the recipe below if you're watching on YouTube. You can find the link in the video description below. It's pretty simple. Uh, I'm trying to remember all the ingredients. So it was minced garlic, minced ginger, green onions, Korean red pepper flakes. I had to buy these online on Amazon, but I got a big bag of them so we can use them for kimchi with our napa cabbage. And then, of course, fish sauce here. I went ahead and bought this online too because it's not always easy to find around here. So I've got this plastic wrap on it. Pull that back. You can see it a little better here. Put that in the sink. You can see there. It's got some nice, nice color on it. it smells really good. And I added more green onions than the recipe called because like I found with the cabbage kimchi we made earlier this year you really can't have enough green onions anyway here we go mm. so the radish has softened up a little bit but it's still got really good crunch to them and I worried I put too much of the Korean red pepper flakes in there but it's not that spicy it's got a little kick to it man that's really good I like that a lot now the recipe said to cube them, but my radishes weren't big enough to cube, so I just kind of cut them in little slices there. But man, that's really, really good. So let's put it in jars so we can have it in the fridge and I might even take some to our little gathering tonight. So this stuff will supposedly keep in jars in the fridge for quite a while, longer than it's going to take us to eat it all. I'm going to try to get some of this juice in here with it. Put all that in there. Try not to make too big of a mess here. Use our little cannon funnel. Man, that's really rich stuff there at the bottom. Mix it up good. And it might be a little more spicier here toward the bottom where a lot of that kind of paste is formed with some Korean red pepper flakes. We'll see tonight. I'll guinea pig all my buddies on this stuff. Make all them try it. And that's all. Alright, and then I'm just going to use these little mason top lid things here. We don't have to use any of our normal jar lids. These are pretty good for storing things in the fridge that are just going to be in there a little while. I need to kind of get to pretty easily there we go so if you grow a lot of tillage radish or daikon radish as a cover crop you might want to give this radish kimchi here a try pretty easy to make and it's a great way to have that cover crop be somewhat dual purpose for you you don't want to pull up all those radishes because you want to get the nutrient scavenging benefits from them but pull you up a few and give this a try and now for the collards. Now some folks will cut these up and then put them in the sink with some water in there and swish them around to clean them and that works fine. But these aren't that dirty so they don't really necessitate all that. So what I like to do is just take the leaves here, kind of rinse them off. I leave these stalks on them because it makes it easy to kind of grab hold to them. We're just kind of wash all the stuff off of them like that. Once I get me a nice little stack of washed leaves like this, then we'll start to cut them. Now, I don't take the stems out of mine. I find they add some nice little texture to it. And I will 
cut them off right here in a minute, but I don't de-stem them or anything. I do want to cut this kind of right down the middle here. That way my collared pieces aren't too big. My cutting board's about not big enough. There we go. And then what I'll do is I'll cut the end off here. Get those big stems out of there. And now we're left with just leaves here. And then just kind of roll these up a little bit like this right here. And then we'll just cut them in little slivers. Put those in the bowl. And I'm bad about making a mess when I do this, but it's okay. Just keep cutting them. Just like that. So I like to get me one bowl cut, and then we'll start cooking them, and then I just kind of wash and cut as I'm slowly whipping these things down. So once I have me a bowl cut, I'm going to go ahead and get, and get my cast iron enamel pot hot. And we'll go ahead and get some pork kind of simmering in there. So I'm going to turn this on medium high there. Let that get hot for a second. And this pot may look dirty. It's not dirty. That's just all kind of goodness and business and seasoning down there. There's been many a pot of collards cooked in this thing right here. All right, our pan's nice and warm. We'll put a little bit of oil in there. And then we're gonna start browning some pork. Now you can use hog jowls, neck bone, ham hocks like here, whatever you can find. This is what I found at the stores. It looked pretty good. So this is what we're gonna use. Add some nice flavor in there. We're just gonna dump those babies in. And since this is gonna be a big pot of collards, I went ahead and got two packs of them. We're just going to let them kind of brown and release some of that fat and goodness in there. Alright, them ham hocks have started to brown up a little bit. Release some of that good business, some of that fat in there. Now I'm going to take a little bit of chicken stock. You could use water. I'm going to use chicken stock. If you got your own homemade chicken stock, that's even better. Just going to put a little bit of this in the bottom there. And that's going to allow us to kind of scrape all that goodness off the bottom of that pan there. It'll be all in our collars here. Just kind of work around there. Get all that flavoring off the bottom of that pan. All right, that's going to be some good stuff right there. I'm going to add a little more chicken stock before we start adding our collards. Just because I don't want any of this stuff on the bottom to burn. I want a little bit of liquid down there, but not a lot. Just enough to make a little steam so we can whip these collards. So we'll just add our collards a little bit at the time. Just kind of a bowl full at the time. Kind of fill up our pot here. And then those will start to wilt down. And as they wilt down, we'll just keep adding more collards on top of it, stirring it around a little bit. We want to wilt all of them down before we add any more liquid. Putting the top on there kind of helps them wilt down a little faster. So we can see that first batch there we put in there. It's wilted down nicely. So now we'll go ahead and add some more. We're just letting that steam and that little bit of liquid in there just kind of wilt these puppies down. And once that second bowl full has wilted down like we see right there, we add some more. And the reason we do it like this is because we can't fit all these greens in the pot at one time. It would take a big old pot to hold all these greens when they're not cooked. So we just put a little bit of time in there and wilt them down a batch at a time and then we eventually end up having a big old pot of greens. Now 
Now once we get them all added and get them all wilted down there, we shouldn't have to add much liquid. Some collars got a decent amount of water in them. As you can see there, water is almost all the way to the top. We're going to top it off with a little more chicken stock. Like I said, you could use water. I find this gives them a little more flavor here. We just want to kind of cover the top of them there with enough liquid. And then turn our heat down and let these puppies just simmer for about, I don't know, 30, 45 minutes, sometimes an hour. They'll get better the longer they sit there. But you want them all to be kind of dark green and tender. Give them a little stir, get some of that pork juice flavoring all amongst there. And we'll just let them do their thing for a little while. And while that's cooking, I'm going to take these scraps here to the chickens. I'm sure they'll really, really enjoy that. And after about 45 minutes, they look like that right there. Ready to be it. Now before we take these over to somebody's house, we might as well taste test them. I know they're good because I've done this enough, but we're going to give them a try. we take some of our homemade pepper sauce here. A little bit of that in there. Give them a little sample. This bowl is hot. Mmm. Mmm. One more bite. They're fine right there. Now I've found you'll find some people in the south that are a little bit picky about what kind of greens they like. You'll hear some people say, well I like mustard greens, but I don't like collard greens. Or I like turnip greens, but I don't like collard greens. But I promise you, you cook some collard greens like this, give them to them, don't tell them what they are, they'll like them. So tell me in the comments below how you like to cook your greens, whether it be collards, turnips, mustard, whatever. Do you kind of follow the same script I do? Or you have your own little variation and twist that you like to add that I might want to try too. So thanks for joining us in the garden and in the kitchen today. If you haven't already, head on over to our website, lazydogfarm.com. Lots of good recipes, product recommendations, and some cool Lazy Dog Farm merch. If you did enjoy the video, make sure to subscribe, hit that notification button, like, and share, and we'll see you next time right here at Lazy Dog Farm. I need to tell you something, and, and we did all the draw, we did the draw on some, we did draw on three of those rows of plants. Yeah, we did draw on three of those rows of plants. You want to tell them bye-bye? Bye-bye. Old farewell mm -hmm. By the beauty of your life